So, uh, today I'm talking about uh, argumentation ethics, and uh, oh, just had to make sure I wasn't streaming that by mistake there. Uh, yeah, so, Hopper's argument from argument, which is the foundation of his argumentation ethics, has long been opaque to my eye. It always seemed to be a large word salad of sorts that I just sort of took on faith that it's probably true in some way. This has, in my view, been the result of a common problem among our great thinkers, that they are excellent at coming to novel novel and incredibly impactful theories, but they lack, they lack the related ability to communicate these deep philosophies to the layperson. Uh, oops. After an extraordinary amount of reading and watching lectures about the topic, I have finally come to what I think is an interpretation that loses nothing from the source material, whilst being comprehensible on a first listen. First I shall discuss exactly what an argumentation, also called di a dialectic, even is. Argumentation is defined as an interaction wherein two or more parties assert premises in support of two or more contradictory conclusions, with the goal of each party being to find the, what the correct conclusion is. Argumentation is specifically the method of solving disputes over claims through the use of peaceful means. That is, one tries to convince their interlocutor through the, through the force of their argument, not through force of violence. I would also like to briefly go over what argumentation is not. It is not simply about convincing others that you are correct without paying any mind to truth of the matter. That manner of speech is that of the ideal, ideological salesman, who simply wants to be seen as being correct. True dialectic is about reaching a synthesis. You articulate your premise in order to your interlocutor as an invitation for them to test its rigour. If they disprove your claim, you, you have both gained information as you now both know where the truth is not. If you instead prove... Oops, sorry. If you instead prove your claim, you now both know where the truth is. No matter what, you gain information. Yeah. It should also be noted that argumentation is not simply free-floating propositions with no, with no connected proposer. It is a human action requiring the use of scarce means towards the end of finding the truth of the matter. Further, it has to be stated that argumentation cannot exist in a normative void. That is, there are certain norms that are presupposed in the very act of argumentation. For instance, one could not argue that argumentation is pointless. This would be called a dialectic or performative contradiction. Because to argue the norm that argumentation is pointless would be contradicted by the very positing of it. Hence, we denote this as a dialectic falsehood. We hence revisit our definition of argumentation to see if we can find a norm more relevant to libertarian ethics. We noted that argumentation was a peaceful interaction. Let's quickly make that more concrete. What would it mean to say that argumentation need not be peaceful? Well, it would mean that you don't care about the truth, because you would be choosing to violently attack your opponent to solve the dispute, rather than allowing them to present counter-arguments. Therefore, violence must, be, must not be a valid move in an argumentation. We now recognise that the set of peaceful actions may be reframed as the set of non-aggressive actions. It is specifically those actions which initiate conflicts that are not peaceful, Therefore, conflict avoidance must be another norm presupposed in the act of argumentation. From this we can come to a dialectic truth, that conflicts ought to be avoided, but it is from this very foundation that modern Rothbardian natural law theory arises. Hence, no ethic could, be, could possibly be proposed that would contradict libertarianism, as the very proposal of this ethic would be a dialectic contradiction, and thus a dialectic falsehood. Now, this theory, due to its often very nuanced presentation, has attracted many critics, including within libertarianism, Bob Murphy and Gene Callahan being prime examples. So I'd now like to go over some of the more popular counterarguments to the argument from argument. The first is that argument is that this argument only applies during the course of an argumentation. That while it's true that I cannot argue for an ethic that murder is good, say, it has nevertheless not been proven that murder is bad outside of an argument. I would not contradict myself to go about arguing, then simply not arguing whilst I'm on a murder free spree. This counter-argument fails on a number of grounds. First, if it is true that the conclusions reached in an argumentation only matter during the course of that argumentation, the same could be said of all conclusions, not only those related to the argument from argument. It's as if I were to grant that it's true that voluntary trades are mutually beneficial, but only when we are actually arguing, and that after the argument I revert back to believing in the contrary, that they are not mutually beneficial. This would be a complete abdication of truth, and thus could not be done in an argumentation. Second, when used by someone arguing a dialectically false ethic, even if we grant them that their ethics can change inside and outside of an argument, 
This leaves them with a position of stating an inconsistent and therefore contradictory ethic. It's as if I were to say that murder is bad in one part of space-time, but good in another. I am simultaneously taking the option, the opinion that murder is both good and bad. The second counter-argument is that argumentation ethics only precludes me from being violent towards the body parts that one is using in the course of an argument. It may be true, the sceptics claim, that I would contradict myself by cutting my interlocutor's tongue out, but I would not by breaking his legs. This counter-argument misses the mark in that Hoppe's argument is not about which body parts are being used, it's about solving the dispute through peaceful rather than violent means. It is certainly true that breaking a man's legs is violent, therefore this is an impermissible move in an argument. To finish up, I would like to go over a few no other notes on this topic, to hopefully round out your understanding. First, each participant in an argument must be entitled to exclusive control over their own body. They cannot simply be a mouthpiece for someone else. Imagine if A and B are wanting to argue, but A has total control over B. This would mean that A is really just speaking to himself, as B would not be able to say anything that wasn't preordained by A. Further, imagine if C has total control over B. Still, B would not be arguing with A. Rather, A would be arguing with C. Further, I wish to clarify in what sense this argument gives us truths. We did not derive from some apodictically true axiom that you ought not aggress. It is not analytically true, but it is dialectically true, which is another objective foundation for truth, as any other ethic would be contradictory and thus false. And lastly, I'd like to go over a few areas of further study in this uh, topic so that you can expand your knowledge beyond what I've given here. First, uh, which I think is probably the best lecture on the topic, is one by Lucas uh, Dominiac. Uh, and I'm going to be putting these links in the chat and uh, in the description of the video when that's up as well. So basically, he sort of translates Hopper's famous speech on the topic into more um, easy-to-understand terms and kind of gives you an almost introduction to that speech. So I think this one should really be watched first. And then you can obviously watch the famous one by Hoppe. Uh, further, there's also this paper by Frank Van Dunn, which uh, is the first place where I really started to grasp the importance of argumentation ethics and why it is true. And lastly, uh, Stefan Kinsella has many, many resources on argumentation ethics and the entire dialogue surrounding it. And all right, is there any questions on that? Yeah, could you go over the first whole 15 minutes, because I wasn't here for it. If I can watch the video afterwards, you can't. <laughs> uh, hey, Satman, will you provide the notes in the chat? Because I was trying to take notes, but couldn't. Yeah, really yeah, sure. I'll um, upload the whole uh, thing on GitHub, and you can uh, see the entire script of it. Okay. Also, I've got to... Uh, just getting the links up for you now as well. No possibility for economic calculation. Right, and if that's uh, all there is, I think we're um, good to go. Um, so, I have a question. Yeah. So, let's say, I don't know, you're beating someone up because you're robbing them because you want their money, let's say. And so engaging in obvious aggression, initiating a conflict. And then someone comes up to you who um, appears very uh, physically strong and says, I don't know, I dislike your proposition for a tax policy. Engage in argumentation with me right now or I'm going to physically assault you. And so... There is, on the other hand, while you're engaging in a conflict, um, someone else who is proposing to initiate conflict with you or argumentation. And since they you know, appear that they could physically beat you up, then you choose to engage in argumentation with them. So you're engaging in conflict with one person, initiating conflict with one person, but engaging in argumentation with another. Well, this would... And... Oh, sorry. Are you still... Uh, yeah, just go ahead. So yeah, uh, this would be the same as like saying, "Well, I agree with this inside the argument, but not outside." It's it would be a contradiction to both accept that uh, you should not initiate conflict and reject that at the same time. 
so this person would uh, necessarily be wrong because they're engaged in a contradiction. I suppose the sort of point is I don't exactly see how it's necessarily a contradiction. Your expressed preference for conflict avoidance in the case of uh, I want to avoid conflict with this person because they seem to be able to uh, be able to physically beat me up. Uh, whereas I don't wish to avoid conflict with another person, which I think I could beat up. I, I don't. I don't see how it's necessarily a con contradiction when you don't necessarily propose that you, when you engage in argumentation, you don't necessarily propose that you would never wish to in, in, engage in conflict. Well, like, uh, consider if somebody were to try and propose this as an ethic. They, uh, they say, well, I am proposing that the correct ethic, the correct norm, is that it's okay to engage, it's okay to attack people who are weaker than you, but not people who are stronger with, than you. If you were to try and propose that, you would be simultaneously presupposing the ethic of conflict avoidance, which says it's never okay to go ahead and attack someone. So those two, it's, it's the fact that your actions and your words are in contradiction there. So you're still in a contradiction if you were to try and propose this to anybody. So therefore it's an unproposable ethic, making it dialectically false. That's the point. I don't I understand how um, argumentation reactive argumentation is it obviously uh, presupposes that um, you have a preference for conflict avoidance in the case of where the argumentation is occurring but i don't see how necessarily um that stretches to all cases by simply the act of argumentation in a particular instance well it's it's the same as uh saying well uh you know I agree that this conclusion is true and that we I cannot possibly dispute that it's true. But nevertheless, I'm going to co go ahead and continue uh, believing in the negation. It's That would be, you would not be truly arguing there because you don't actually care about the truth of the matter. You just want to believe what you want to believe. I think the... Uh, I think the example of it would be impossible to argue that argumentation is pointless is a lot easier to see, uh, but it's the exact same logical structure. It's just that the logic behind, uh, you know, the norm of conflict avoidance is far uh, more nuanced in its derivation, well, which is why it's less obvious. Well, so on the other hand, you of course can argue that argumentation is pointless, but in A arguing with B, A could potentially argue that arguing with C is pointless. So, but like you couldn't ever categorically argue that argumentation is pointless is my, is my point there. And it, when you are engaging in argumentation, the presupposition, which is relevant is that you think it's better to solve disputes peacefully rather than violently. Uh, it could not be any other way. So but that would apply to any given dispute. If you were to try and uh, if you came along another dispute and you just wanted to solve it through violence instead of through peaceful means, uh, you couldn't ever justify why you did that. You could never justify that it would be better to solve it violently than peacefully there. Do we have any further questions, or is, or is that good uh, to go? Uh, I just want to clarify for the last time. Like, what you're saying here is basically that you can, like, physically, you can do it. It's not against the laws of physics to you know, engage in argument in one uh, in one second and then go beat someone else in another. But like, you can. Those things are inherently self contradictory. You cannot make a set of rules in which uh, those things can coexist uh, and you be like you uh, you have to pick one you cannot have both and still be considered correct in your position right yeah so this is the distinction between normative laws and physical laws like a physical law you could never possibly break it but a normative law you could in fact break it but it would be wrong to break it. and you're right it's the fact that you're presupposed you are 
essentially proposing two contradictory norms, which means that you have to be wrong about ethics because you have a contradiction. It's uh, very Kantian in that sense, where you say, hey, if the only altern if there are two possibilities and one leads to a contradiction, we have proven that the uh, that the con counter to that must be true. That is uh, where you could go now. Cool. I'll stop the recording now then.